Do you find that some days you feel exhausted and lack the energy to head to the gym, get that project done, or study for that exam? Well, we all have these off days where we feel a little bit tired and don't want to do the things that we know we should. Even me. If you're waking up and feeling tired all the time and a little bit unmotivated, there are some simple things that you can do right now to help recharge your batteries and give you that motivation and energy boost needed to get that work done. So today, we're gonna start by understanding just what sleep is and why it's so important. And then I'm gonna break down my top four evidence-based sleep tips to help you stay energized when everyone else is napping. Do consider hitting that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. And let's start by looking at how we can improve our sleep. So how much sleep do we need to not be tired? Well, research from the National Sleep Foundation suggests that we need at least seven hours of sleep to function at our best. In today's hectic society, that can be tough with scientists agreeing that we're sleeping less now than we were 40 years ago. So you just need to set your alarm for seven hours, right? Well, it's not quite that easy, unfortunately. If you've ever slept a full eight hours and still woken up feeling sluggish, that's probably because of the human sleep cycle. Over the course of the night, your total sleep is made up of several rounds of the sleep cycle, which is composed of four individual stages. In any typical night, a person goes through four to six sleep cycles in total. Sleep is divided up into two broad types, non-rapid eye movement or non-REM sleep and rapid eye movement or REM sleep. Now, non-REM sleep occurs first, and during this phase, body temperature falls and heart rate falls, and the brain uses less energy. REM sleep, on the other hand, represents a smaller portion of total sleep time. It's the main occasion for dreams or nightmares to occur, and it's associated with fast brain waves, eye movements, loss of muscle tone, and suspension of homeostasis. Not all sleep cycles are the same length, but on average, they're around 90 minutes each, occurring four to six times in a good night's sleep. So if you get woken up in the middle of the sleep cycle, you're going to wake up tired. As Pierce J. Howard put in his book, The Owner's Manual for the Brain, a person who sleeps only four cycles, so six hours, will feel more rested than someone who slept for eight to 10 hours, but who's not completed any one cycle because of being awakened before it's completed. The more sleep deprived we are, the less likely we are to notice the effects too. In a famous experiment from Van Dong and et al in 2003, three groups of volunteers slept for a maximum of four hours, six hours, or eight hours per night for two weeks. Each day, participants completed a test of alertness called the psychomotor vigilance test. This involves pressing a button as quickly as possible in response to numbers appearing on a screen. The shorter sleepers always perform the worst on the PVT test, making the most errors. Performance worsened progressively each day through greater lack of sleep. And this was put down to the sleep debt that accumulated over time, causing them to make more mistakes. But when participants were asked how alert they felt, self ratings of sleepiness only increased for three days after that. So perceptions of sleepiness stabilized. Participants felt as though they were adapting to short sleep, but their performance revealed otherwise. So it seems that we're hardwired to underestimate our own sleep loss. So how can we improve our sleep and wake up energized. Well, now we understand a little bit about sleep and sleep cycles, let's dive into how we can actually improve our own quality of sleep. So if your sleep is interrupted mid-cycle, you're going to feel tired. If you have a varying bedtime and are being woken up by an alarm, your sleep is going to be interrupted. So the first step to improving your sleep is therefore all about defining what's called your sleep window. Now to figure out your sleep window, which is the time you allocate for sleep each night, you can start by keeping a sleep diary and noting down your bedtime and waking time for a few weeks. This can also be done using sleep tracking tech, which I'll touch on later. And you might also want to note down how energized you feel when you wake up. You'll also then be able to calculate your average sleep time over a few weeks. So now that you have a personalized sleep window, let's pick your bedtime. Most people use alarms to wake up for work or school, but we want to wake up naturally as our sleep cycle ends without any interruptions. You can pick a time that wakes for you to wake up every single morning. And for the first few weeks of playing with this, you might want to set an alarm just as a safety net. If you go to bed at a set time where you know you're gonna get a certain amount of sleep, you will wake up naturally. So now you've recorded and chosen a bedtime that allows you to wake up naturally, let's look at your wind down routine. The wind down routine helps you to focus and start building a habit around good sleep. 
Now I'm guilty just like everyone else of trying to pack in way too much in our waking hours. Social arrangements, watching TV, or exercising at the end of a busy day can mean we end up going to bed late and when our head hits the pillow, we're actually overtired and we've missed our sleep window. Unfortunately, having a racing mind just before we go to bed often leads to the inability to fall asleep and so having a wind down routine is crucial. I found this to be one of the most important factors to getting a good night's sleep. Firstly, what I do is I prioritize my sleep and block out in my diary or set a reminder a few hours before I go to bed to get my head down to the pillow. Next, I'll fill out things that I find calming and relaxing to help me wind down. This might be reading a book, meditating, listening to relaxing music, or anything that I find that's passive which I enjoy. Next up is your sleep environment. And it's also really important as part of your wind down routine. Where you sleep should be set up to win at sleep and you should avoid working from your bed. Have a comfy bed and invest in a comfy mattress, pillows, sheets, and a duvet. These can be expensive, but given that you spend a third of your life sleeping, it's an excellent investment. Many companies have popped up to focus on sleep comfort, such as Casper, Nectar, Eve, Simba, and lots of others. And you can make your bed in the morning so that it's all set up for sleeping the following night. Next up, try and dim your lights and keep away from bright lights as you go to bed, as they hinder the production of melatonin, a hormone that the body creates to facilitate sleep. Keep your sleep environment dark with blackout blinds or use an eye mask. And get rid of any electronics. Build in a 30 to 60 minute pre-bed buffer time that's device three. Cell phones, tablets, and laptops all cause mental stimulation that's hard to shut off and also generates blue light that also decreases melatonin production. Finally, instead of making falling asleep your goal, it's often easier to focus on relaxation. Meditation, mindfulness, paced breathing, and other relaxation techniques can put you in the right mindset for bed rather than forcing yourself to sleep. Apps like Calm now have sleep stories to help you wind down too. Now, I'm a big fan of Fitbit sleep tracking ability on the charge and other models, which also looks at oxygenation levels while you sleep. Apple Watch and other trackers have this ability too. Now I'll be covering sleep tracking in much more detail in a future video, so if you're interested in that, do hit the subscribe button. But one thing to say is that there are lots and lots of great habit trackers and gamified sleep tracking apps out there, such as Sleepwatch or Sleep Town, to help you track your sleep and see where you're waking up. Now, according to sleep expert Dr. Phyllis Z of Northwestern University, the best naps happen between 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. and last between 20 and 40 minutes. That afternoon timing is best for your body clock, whereas napping later on in the day can affect how you sleep that night. Taking a nap longer than 40 minutes can also cause your brain to slow wave sleep, which will leave you waking up in a state of confusion, the opposite of what we're trying to solve for. Next up is exercise and mindfulness. And now we've optimized for good sleep habits and hygiene, let's look at how we can support our sleep and feel more energized when awake using exercise and mindfulness. The relationship between exercise and sleep has been extensively investigated by researchers. Studies have highlighted that exercise can improve sleep-related problems and help you to get a good night's sleep. Recent research also suggests insufficient or poor quality sleep can lead to lower levels of physical activity the following day, identifying that sleep and exercise have a bi-directional relationship. In other words, optimizing your exercise routine can potentially help you sleep better and getting an adequate amount of sleep each night may promote healthier physical activity levels during the day. Exercise itself has also been shown to improve our energy levels. And in a University of Georgia research study, researchers reviewed more than 65 studies related to fatigue and physical activity and involving almost 7,000 participants. Over 90% of all of the studies demonstrated the same effect. Less fatigue was reported by those people who took part in and completed an active physical regime when compared with their counterparts who did no exercise at all. The results were clear. More exercise equals more energy and less fatigue. And a study done at the University of Georgia back in 2008 also found that young adults who did just 20 minutes of low intensity exercise three times a week experienced both higher daily energy levels and much lower levels of fatigue. Early morning exercise such as walking or starved cardio can help you kickstart your day and get your heart pumping. High intensity weightlifting and HIIT can increase the blood supply to the brain and release dopamine and serotonin and help reduce stress to keep you energized and on track throughout your day. 
Similarly, studies have shown that mindfulness can help focus and energize our brains in the morning and throughout the day. According to one study, intensive meditation can help you focus and sustain your attention, even during the most boring tasks. It also helps boost your mood. A 2012 study found that people who meditated stayed on tasks longer and made fewer task switches, as well as reporting less negative feedback after task performance. And as we've seen from mindfulness and meditation already, they can help reciprocally with our wind down routine and help you to sleep better. Now, all living organisms need fuel to provide energy for life. In humans, that fuels what we eat and drink and the light spectrums we absorb through our skin. Getting the right food, water and sun exposure at the right intervals is critical to avoiding energy drops and feeling tired. The energy content of food can be found by burning it and measuring how much heat is released and is measured in kilocalories, which is a measure of heat rise, or kilojoules, which is a measure of energy rise. I'll go into detail on nutrition in another video, but for now, it's simply important to know that your body burns an amount of energy from daily activities, which is known as your basal metabolic rate, or BMR, and requires certain levels of nutrients. If you skip a meal, eat unhealthily, or move into starvation, your body compensates by trying to reduce energy expenditure, making you feel tired and lethargic. So regular meals and not skipping meals helps for a regular supply of energy in the form of your calories, which is made up of carbohydrates, protein, and fats. On average, women should have around 2,000 calories a day, and men should have around 2,500 calories. The UK's NHS offers the following recommendations for balancing your diet for energy. You should eat at least five portions of a variety of fruit and vegetables every single day. You should base meals on potatoes, bread, rice, pasta, or other starchy carbohydrates, and choose whole grain versions where possible. You should have some dairy or dairy alternatives such as soya drinks, and choose lower fat and lower sugar options when available. You should eat some beans, pulses, fish, eggs, meat, and other proteins, and including two portions of fish in every week, one of which should be oily. And finally, choosing unsaturated oils and spreads and eat them in small amounts. And you should also drink eight glasses of fluids a day. Now, in a busy week, it can be difficult eating well, and the ease of ordering junk food is always a temptation. Meal planning and meal prepping ahead of the week is your friend here, as is investing in Tupperware and containers to store your food. Good preparation wins every time. Some cool options for meal prep containers include Fit Pack and Swell. Now, I mentioned water, and on the point of water, the US National Academies of Sciences, Engineering and Medicine determine an adequate daily fluid intake is 3.7 liters of fluid a day for men and 2.7 for women. These recommendations cover fluids from water, other beverages, and food. And about 20% of daily fluid intake comes from foods and the rest from what we drink. A good hack here is to carry a water bottle with a known volume and drink this during the day, even when you're busy. There are some really cool water bottles available, including Chili's and Lark. Now, equally as important as regular healthy meals and water is sunlight. Sunlight exposure helps your body correctly time its production of melatonin, the hormone we mentioned earlier that helps you to get a good night's sleep and also plays a part in maintaining your circadian rhythm, which ensures that you stay in sync with the day and night cycle. Sunlight is also your body's primary source of vitamin D, which is not only important for keeping your bones healthy, supporting your immune system and keeping your lungs working, but it also plays a vital role in helping avoid fatigue. A study done back in 2014 found a high correlation between vitamin D deficiency and fatigue, as well as an improvement in fatigue symptoms when the patients in the study got their vitamin D levels back to normal. An estimated 1 billion people globally suffer with a deficiency of vitamin D, and getting just 20 minutes of sun exposure each day can help you to hit your recommended daily allowance of 800 units. If you're in a country like the UK where sunlight is infrequent, vitamin D supplementation should be considered, as should upping your oily fish intake. Now, I drink a maximum of one cup of coffee a day, which is usually a latte or cappuccino running in at around 190 kilocalories, or sometimes a mocha, which is a bit more. I usually drink it first thing in the morning or just after lunch, and I don't drink coffee every day. The problem with stimulants is that your body will build up a tolerance to them, requiring more and more each time to have a similar effect. And if they're taken late enough in the day, I never drink after 4 p.m., for example, it can mess up with the quality of your sleep. Caffeine actually acts as an adenosine receptor antagonist. Adenosine is a substance in our body that promotes sleep, and caffeine blocks the adenosine receptor to keep you from falling asleep. 
Caffeine reaches a peak level in your blood within about 30 to 60 minutes and has a half-life of three to five hours. Once the caffeine has moved through your system, all that built up adenosine comes rushing back in at once, causing that post-coffee crash. Now, alcohol can induce drowsiness, so some people are keen on a nightcap before bed. Unfortunately, alcohol also affects the brains in ways that can lower sleep quality, and for that reason, it's best to avoid alcohol in the lead up to bedtime. Now, while we've touched on some really heavy signs and physiological ways to stop being tired all the time, it's also important to focus on what I believe to be the most important way to feel energized every single day, regardless of whether you're feeling tired or not. And that is mindset and enjoyment. And this helped me to code and build successful businesses around my busy life as a surgeon, sometimes coming back from a night shift when I was super tired and still coding or closing deals despite having only grabbed about three hours of sleep. In an interview with the Financial Times, legendary investor Warren Buffett shared what drives him to keep going so strong at his age. Warren said, why do I get up out of bed every day and jump up feeling excited at 88? It's because I love what I do and I love the people I do it with. I've got 25 people at Berkshire Hathaway. We go to baseball games together. They try and make my life good. I try and make their life good. We spend way more awake hours at work than we do away from work, which begs the question, do you love your job and the people you work with? Warren Buffett has gone on the record to say that the people who are most successful are those who love doing what they're doing. If we pull all of these concepts together, it aligns back to some of the core principles which I coach on, which is making sure that you have good health, wealth, love and happiness and motivation that gets you up out of bed in the morning excited to attack the day, even if you have been woken up in the middle of the night and haven't quite achieved your full sleep cycles. Now, I hope you found this video useful and it helps you to get a better sleep. I'm gonna be putting out lots more videos around sleep and how to be more motivated and productive in your day. So if you're interested in those, do hit that subscribe button. And I'm also gonna put up some other videos on habit trackers and sleep trackers that you can start using right now to help you optimize your wind down routine and going to bed and getting up at the same time every single day. And I'll catch you again in the next video.